OK, we're back with a massive favourite of uh, both myself and Bill Hubbard, um, <laughs> Neil Kimberley, external forex analyst for Active Trades. Good morning, Neil. How are you today? I'm very well. Good to see you both. Right. I wanted to get straight into it so we don't forget, <laughs> we don't forget the uh, all the good stuff that you said offline just before we came on air. Um, really, obviously, the top point of Tip TV is to sort of mention the things that other lesser media outlets fail uh, to No, they mention. don't have the courage. They don't have the courage or the knowledge yes, to mention. Yes, so, be right. Um, Fed raised their rates 0.25%. What do you think that we missed or what do you think is important? Alan Greenspan said earlier this year the Fed funds rate was obsolescent. And I'm with him on that one. You've got $2.6 trillion worth of excess reserves placed with the Federal Reserve. And the guys who have placed that money were getting 0.25%. And now they're getting 0.5%, which is nice. The Fed's cost of managing those excess reserves has just doubled. Now, at some point, Congress is going to topple onto this when the, 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 the money that the Fed pays back to the American administration starts to go down. But that's the key thing for me. She can't go much further. I don't really care what their dots are saying. <laughs> the bottom line is there's a certain pace. You can't unpick nine years of monetary policy changes in a few months. It's got to be slow and it will be slow. And I think the 10-year is telling you that this morning, 225. <laughs> it's, you know, you would think she hadn't done anything. We were above that level last week. Um, and therefore, I think this is a false market. Obviously, Christmas is upon us. Markets are illiquid. I think going into the new year, the markets are going to realize that this is not like three out of the last four times where the Fed started to tighten the cycle. I don't feel the same to me, and I was there for all four of them. I've never seen the Federal Reserve tighten so late in the recovery. Never. Therefore, I have to assume she's not going to be able to go at the same pace. I don't buy this idea that US rates are going to go up even as far as, as, the, as the dot suggests. I don't think the base effect is going to fall out on oil. I think oil's still going down. And I think she knows it because she made an allusion last night. She made an interesting quote. And she said, uh, it's a myth that uh, expansions die of old age. That is a take on Rudy Dornbush, the economist from MIT, who died in 2002, I think. He said famously, and Stan Fisher was a good friend of his, he said, no U.S. expansion has <laughs> ever died of old age in its bed. Each one has been murdered by the Federal Reserve. Now, shit. And from a practical perspective, she's not going to go much further. The issue for me is... Dollar goes up or dollar goes down. I don't care what all the rest of it. I think I know that the US economy is better than most other places on Earth. I think I know she's not going to go as fast as everybody thinks. Therefore, I should reject the idea that it's the same as the last three or four times where the dollar goes down the early part of it. I think I know that Europe doesn't want a higher euro. I know I know <laughs> that China wants a weaker yuan. I think I know the Prime Minister Arbe is going to go for an election in both houses in the middle of next year, and he's going to want a weaker yen. And I'm worried to death about the pound, having heard what Mr. Carney was saying the last few days. So you know, the dollar is the best-looking horse in the glue factory. Let me add, just say one thing. You just mentioned Greenspan, OK? In the old days, before selfies and Instagram and this, that, and the other, the New York Bond Market Association used to have a Christmas party all off the record at the Waldorf West Story. We're talking 1985, when Greenspan was chairman, mm. OK? Off the record. He said what you just said he said earlier this year. Basically, we at the Fed Reserve, comma, or any central bank, you, the market, tell us what is the correct level, mm -hmm. and we just react accordingly. Mm -hmm. And one person asked me about that, and he said, I will make no comment, since I'm chairman of the Fed Reserve and they are my owners, about whether this is a right rate, a wrong rate, or any rate. Next question, please, he said. Mm -hmm. It's a good point. And this was 85. It's 85. Nothing changes. I mean, <laughs> last week, <clears throat> interesting, the Chinese, last Friday, come out after the market <laughs> with a, uh, a new index, which is actually the 2005 index dusted off and put off the shelf. We'll come on to that in a minute. <laughs> They're playing the Fed like an old Stradivarius. They knew we were going to have the meeting on the 15th and 16th. They know they need a weaker yuan to get themselves out of this mess. And they know we're in the middle of the electoral cycle. Donald Trump doesn't like what they did in August. It was a disgrace, <coughs> Donald Trump said. Well, Donald, it's going to get worse. And now they're saying, well, you know what? We're going to look at the yuan against a basket of currencies and not just bilaterally against the dollar. I get that. Gives you camouflage to weaken the yuan. If they go, and I think they will go, they've been going for a few days, 
What happens to the rest of Asia? They can't stand by and lose competitive edge against China. I'm um, Koreans, the Japanese, the Taiwanese, they're all going to go the same way. So that's going to be weak for emerging markets. At the same time, as all these emerging market economies are trying to manage $9.8 trillion worth of dollar debt, which they took on voluntarily and invested in industries which are no longer producing. You've still got to manage that debt. And by the way, Janet's just put the rate up. It doesn't look pretty. They're going to try and devalue their way out of this. I don't like the pound. I saw your program yesterday about Mark Carney. You were mocking him to an extent. I think it's fair Me? to say. Yes. But here's Disgusting. the point. Disgusting. When Mark Carney says, you don't know, you don't want to know about half the things I'm thinking about. <laughs> as a trader, that says to me, he's not thinking about things that are good. He must be thinking about things that are worrisome. Otherwise, he wouldn't have a problem with me knowing about it. And with cable below 150 today, I'm worried about sterling in the UK in the new year. Are we going to get caught between the euro on one side, where the Bank of England doesn't want to raise rates in case sterling goes up too far against the euro and we can't, stand, we can't sell whiskey and shortbreads to the Germans? Or do we raise rates because we've got to follow our American brethren? <laughs> and if we don't, the pound falls against well, the dollar Mark, and we start well, sucking the, the, other, the other issue inflation. Is, isn't Brexit also a total mess? I mean, Ca Cameron is absolutely making a pig's ear of, I don't know what the hell he's doing. I mean, it's just, it's embarrassing. <laughs> Brexit. Because you know, you know he wants to stay in. Yes. Because he wants to get, he wants to be Brexit. with EU in 20 years time. <laughs> so That's he's just, just all over the place. <clears throat> it's the economy stupid, isn't it? Yes. It's the, it's, it's the economy stupid. If he can go to Brussels and come away with a few sops, a few crumbs off a rich man's table, his hope is that when we get to the referendum, the focus will be on the economy. It may not be. Mark, let me just Brits interrupt briefly. Now, all this year, okay, starting in March, when was the Fed going to move? Now, will the, once January comes, will it be if, when does the Bank of England move? May, August, or now they're talking February 2017? Do you think anybody in this country can afford a hike? Because as far as I can see, the credit <laughs> cards are leveraged up. You know, <laughs> Right, around, people are up to here. They're up to here. They're, 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 they're not going to take it. You mean with all the great wage increases we've had with the employment? Yeah, 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 yeah. I really buy into that yeah. one. Yeah. I, no, I, I just think, I think sterling, the UK trade deficits. We buy a, a load of tap from overseas. We don't make anything. We've uh, we've done our very best to squash our financial <laughs> services industry, which <laughs> always helped the invisible trade balance. And he's sitting there and Carney's going, mm -hmm. you know what, I wish Justin Trudeau had not been elected because at least I could have gone back to Canada exactly for a political right. career. <laughs> but as it is, suddenly he's looking at another five-year term at the Bank of England. And he's, he's, he's sitting there thinking, he must be thinking, Atlantic Island, you, you don't UK, think he's doing squeezed it, between America and but Europe. But you don't what think do he's do? doing it strictly for the money, do you? I think Mr. McCarney is a, a gifted politician <laughs> and a gifted monetary policy maker, and he has the best interests of the UK in, at heart, uh, especially, you know. But when I look at what happened in Canada, when you've got manufacturing in Canada imploding, it's not just about oil in Canada. Nope. You've got 163% household debt ratio. That's not all Stephen Pelos. A lot of that goes back to the policies that Mr. Carney That's brought exactly in. So, right. And this, this economy, I believe, is far more combustible than Canada ever really? was. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. And consequently, I can understand why Mr. Carney doesn't want us to know half the things he's <laughs> thinking about, because I imagine it's not, it's not a Christmas story. It's Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, so, so really, there's that sterling in, in, for 2016, sterling is just going to be on the back foot. I don't like the pound against the dollar. I'm not sure about the euro yet. We've got a Spanish election coming this weekend. It's probably going to come up with a minority government. I think Catalonia is going to be a big, big issue in 2016, especially if the Spanish government is backed by the Ciudadanos party, which is a party which stands against Catalonian independence. The market's not pricing Spain. The market's not pricing what's going to happen in Portugal. The market's not looking at Greece anymore as if it's gone away. It hasn't gone away. It's festering in the background. And also, we don't know what's going on with Schengen. We don't know how many people are going to come piling across the Mediterranean next year. We have no idea what's happening in Libya, because it looks as if we're getting sucked into that one now. And I understand that. And we don't know how people are going to react when the EU brings out its own border police.
This is great stuff. Wow. Really <laughs> Neil, uh, come back Thanks. again, and uh, maybe after Christmas this time. Yeah, yeah, um, please, yeah. after Christmas. One last thing. John Connolly was in the back of the car with John F. Kennedy in 1963, survived the assassination attempt, was wounded, became Treasury Secretary for President Nixon in 1971 at the time of the Nixon shock. John Connolly, and I always roll this out, so everybody who's watching who knows me is used to this, John Connolly told the rest of the world in 1971, the dollar is our currency, but it's your problem. It's as true today as it ever was, and you're going to see it again in the first six months of next year. Everybody owes dollars. There ain't enough going around. Buy dollars, wear diamonds. Neil Kim Kimberley, external forex analyst for Active Trades. Thanks for coming today. Thank you very much, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. We'll be back after the break with Charlie Morris. And you knew where.